Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Wanted to do a little bit of a lure review or kind of go over some of the stuff that I used this uh, summer and spring, whatever, for my tournament fishing and what I've had success with on. Um, so let's just let's just hop right into it. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is something that's somewhat new. I would say it's probably uh, maybe it got introduced like four or five years ago, maybe even longer than that. I just got introduced to it uh, maybe two years ago, and I recently started using it a lot more, and that is the Tokyo Rig. So the Tokyo Rig is kind of like a unique setup. Um, it's got a little bit of a wire here that you can throw a weight on. So I've just got like a little uh, quarter ounce lead weight. You can throw tungsten, whatever you want on it. And it's also got two separate, it's got one little ring in the middle that separates the weight from the hook and where the hook ties into. Um, the thing that's unique about this is the fact that like when it comes to um, like setting the hook on a fish, the fact that you don't have like a weight in the front and then when he comes up and closes his mouth on that and you go to set the hook, there's no weight up here to kind of help pull it through his mouth. I feel like I've got a lot better hookups with this thing that I have with just your standard Texas rig. Now, the one thing I will talk about this is I I don't know if you can necessarily, like I don't know if people have really used it a lot for just Texas rig fishing. Um, that's pretty much all I used it for. I just wanted to throw something that was a little bit more unique than just the standard Texas rig. Don't get me wrong, Texas rig works great. Used it all summer weighed a lot of fish in this summer with it especially with like worms and stuff but this year i wanted to try this out just to kind of compare it and i actually fished it just like a texas rig had a lot of good luck with it i know guys on i think on the bass pro tour are kind of using it to like punch through mats and i think a lot of people just in general are doing that now too once they've kind of come out with it i know seth fighter is like a big big time user of this and highly recommends it and i think he uses a pretty big weight when he punches through mats like probably one ounce to one and a half ounce maybe even up to two i'm not 100 percent sure um but yeah i didn't use it to punch mats with um there was an opportunity this year to punch a mat uh we had the spot kind of picked out but when we went to go do it um unfortunately when you fish smaller lakes as a when you're doing your tournaments and stuff um you better have a good number draw because sometimes guys are going to get there first because there's not a lot on these smaller lakes so that was something that happened to us as we went to go punch some mats with it and we had to change what we were doing because somebody was already there doing the same thing we were trying to do. Um, but I also had really good luck with it fishing around brush piles and I don't know why but I feel like I feel like the wire maybe I'm not 100% sure but like I could feel it coming through brush and I would like hop it over a little bit easier. I don't I'm not sure I wonder if it's just a sensitivity from how the weight and the wire is on there. But I would feel it just barely hit a stick, and I'm like, okay, okay, and I would pop it, and it would come right over it, no issues. And I usually tech exposed it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the lure that I got on. You guys can probably see what I'm using right here, but this is a Z-Man Turbo Cross. So the one thing I'm going to tell you about this is, and I recommend this on all Z-Man products if you're going to Texas rig them, is make sure that you try to tech expose it as much as you can. Um, for this one in particular, the reason why I tech expose a lot of it is because it's the craw has a little bit of a thicker, it has like a little thicker middle where I'm like hooking it because this is just a little three got hook. And I felt like if I didn't tech expose it, and when I didn't tech expose it, when the fish would grab it, it almost like wouldn't go through all the way and I would just barely hook them or they would just barely miss it when I set the hook. But once I tech exposed it, I had my hookup percentage like shot through the roof. So I highly recommend um, tech exposing any type of Z-Man product that you're going to, you know, Texas rig. Um, the other thing too is why do I have, why am I choosing this in particular bait to throw? Well, the one thing I do like about this uh, Turbo Cross is sometimes when I would throw it, I was on the dock messing around with it one day. And I kind of noticed that Z-Man's got, they kind of have like a little bit of a floating action. And the way I have this, the hooks, the weight set up, it's kind of got the flat bottom and I was kind of throwing it up by the dock and there was a little bit of muddy spots and I kind of noticed it would stick, it would stick better in the mud and allow it to hit. But with this weight, what it did, as soon as it hit, this craw would kind of stand up almost like in a defensive position and then slowly go down into the bottom. Whereas a Texas rig, it would just be more like boom in that soft bottom. Some of the tip would be already buried 
it would be kind of hard to see. And then this, I felt like it, you, the, the craw was a little bit more exposed. And I feel like that's why I got a little bit more bites with this. Now, um, my uncle uh, threw a lot of Texas rigging, and I kind of uh, threw this next to him pretty much all summer. He doesn't, I don't think he necessarily likes throwing te Tokyo rig. I don't even think he owns one. I think he threw one maybe a few times. But um, I felt like I caught significantly more fish use, using this like a Texas rig as compared to just using a Texas rig. Something you might try, just something that I wanted to try with, and hey, it worked. Um, but yeah, just give it a try. They're pretty, they're fairly cheap. I think I got these at Bass Pro Shops for like, I think you get three for like five bucks or something like that. Um, like I said, throw any kind of weight on it you want. I just threw lead on it for right now. Um, I do have tungsten and stuff that I use, but that's just something I wanted to give you guys a heads up on. So with that one out of the way, let's move to the next one. Now this one, this one's kind of a unique one. I really do like this one a lot. Um, so this is a VMC uh, rugby jig. Now I kind of used it almost like a Texas rig slash shaky head setup. And what actually got me onto this lure is I was wa or this this terminal tackle was I was watching a video with and let's see if I can get that up there so you can get a little better look and I'll try to link all the stuff down in the description below so you guys can kind of check it out and see what I was throwing. But I was watching an episode of like I think it was called Mike and the Ike in the Shop and I think he kind of helped design this because I think this is like the, what they call a VMC Ike approved rugby jig. I don't know if that means that he's had some type of help with designing it or not. But um, I tell you what, this is probably kind of unique in the way it's shaped in the rugby head. Cause it's like a cross between a football head and like um, like a round head. And it fished through rocks very well, like gravel too. And it also did really good around grass, which I was highly, I was very surprised that it worked that way. Um, now, you can pretty much throw anything on this, but the thing that I threw the most on it was just like a worm. But, in, but I threw like a very particular type of worm though. I didn't, I threw a little bit of trick worms on it, but I used this thing, it's like, it's from Chompers. It's like a watermelon, green flake color, I'm not 100% sure, but it's got like a garlic scent to it. But it's just a small, like maybe four to five inch tapered tail worm. Had a lot of good luck with this. I don't know, I don't know why. I think it's just got just enough shine to it. It kind of looked like maybe like a little bait fish or something down there, I'm not 100% sure. But I just seem to get a lot more bites paired up with that um, rugby head. So that's something I would definitely try out if you're kind of wanting to, you know, expand your tackle. And maybe if you're kind of throwing Texas rig and you're like, I want to try something new, definitely try this or the Tokyo rig out. That was something I used. And I just felt like I did get quite a bit of, quite a few bites with it. Um, and I used it a lot. And it just had a really good action too. And I didn't really lose that many this year, which was surprising. And I think it's just the way the head of it shapes, kind of like that rugby style shape. So um, definitely give that one a try. Throw, throw, you know, throw craws on it or something too. Leave a, like a little comment below and let me know if you guys had any luck with anything else on it. I just mostly use tapered tail worms, seem to work out pretty good. All right, now the next one. So this one is kind of new to me and it's been around a long time. And that is the old swinging head jig. Now this setup right here is just a, I think it's a four or five aught hook with like a half ounce weight. Um, now funny, here's the funny thing that I had with this. So this one, the swinging head, I started out throwing this, uh, early summer, caught a couple fish on it. I was like, man, that works pretty good. Um, did a little research on how to throw it. Cause I kind of threw it last year, but I didn't really, didn't really re research anything on it. I just kind of threw it on and just kind of did what I wanted to do with it. And then I stopped throwing this and uh, midsummer and I told my dad about it one day and he ordered like I don't know how many ordered I think he ordered a whole bunch of them and then he made a whole bunch of them so I was going out fishing with him one day we were just kind of hodgepodging around on this little lake that we had and he was just catching one after the other after the other and I was I looked over and I go man what are you using he's like oh it's that swinging head jig that you told me about and I was like oh really and he started and he was throwing just the the biffle bug on it I think those kind of pair together anyways from what I could see because it looks like he kind of invented the whole thing or maybe had some type of design in it but I just thought it was funny because I gave up on it like early summer and then all of a sudden my dad just smoking me with it so then I picked it up again now the one thing I will say so I've got a spicy beaver on it so this is the new reaction innovation spicy beaver and this thing has a lot of action hands down um 
the thing is it the thing with it is is I had more bites on the sweet beaver so the one that's a little bit more subtle than I did with the one with more action and, um, and I don't know necessarily why it just may be the fisheries or maybe the way I was fishing it but I thought for sure it would get more bites with the um, spicy beaver but honestly the sweet beaver actually got way more bites on it and you can throw anything on this this is kind of like a crawl profile I mean it is a beaver but it kind of looks like a crawl too um, you could probably throw any type of crawl on that too and be just fine kind of mimic like a little crawfish going across the ground now the way I fish this okay so now there's two ways that I tried fishing with it so I used it primarily as a Texas rig and I would pop it up I'd let it hit and then I would just let it set for a second and then I'd reel it a little bit I'd pop it up let it sit and then I'd reel it a little bit okay and then the other way I, I used it, so I only used it two ways, and I'm sure there's more ways to fish it, but this is just the stuff that I had success with. I actually used it like a crankbait. So I had like a, a seven foot, seven to three gear ratio rod. I would throw this lure out there. I would let it sit on bottom. Once I felt, once there was no, once there was slack in my line and I knew it wasn't falling anymore, I would start to slow reel it, just as slow as I could. And then, I would just feel it hit something. If it was going to get stuck, I'd give it a little pop pop and then I'd let it set, let it sink. And usually that's when I got my bites. But sometimes when I, when it would hit and I would reel it again, and once it hit like another rock or a piece of wood or something down in the bottom, boom, I'd get a strike. Now, this is one thing I would say though, is to make sure you hold on for, onto this because there was times where I was just reeling it really slow. I hit a rock, hit a rock, and then boom, I would just get smashed out of nowhere from a bass or something hitting it. And, um, but honestly, those are the, really the only two ways I fish it. Now I do tech expose this to these beaver baits. They have like a little crease in the center that kind of helps you with that. It kind of makes it a little bit more nice, like just a nice smooth profile there. And that's one thing I really like about their uh, baits is the fact that they add that little detail in and attention the details everything to me when it comes to lures and that's just a really cool thing that they do so I can run my finger right over that and not even get hooked and that's crazy some stuff you can barely get a little nick but this I don't get anything and that just kind of helps that 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 texpo just kind of helps get that hook in right away as compared to just having it regularly inside the, the plastic okay so next one last one I promise this will be it Okay, so this one, I kind of have the package, I'll kind of show you this one. So this is one that I was didn't really want to jump on the bag, bandwagon right away, but I did. And um, I really do like their products, um, and that is the that is the Guggen Baits. Now I know, um, just from my experience, it has a great smell. Um, they have they have really good colors and I, the one thing I do like about them is the fact that they individually package their products. Now to me that's kind of crucial anymore. I think people are taking more steps to do that and that makes sure that the plastic, all the plastic stays the same out of the package where there's times where I'll throw something and it's not you know individually packaged and I'll pick something out and I'll notice that that lure is kind of a little bit off as compared to the other one and how they're cut and how they're transported. And sometimes the heat kind of messes with them too because any type of heat messes with this plastic like crazy. Um, but that is one thing I like. Now the price point on some of the Guggen stuff, I think it's a little high right now, but I think once they get kind of the durability of the lure down, I think it would be spot on for the price point. But right now I feel like the durability needs to be worked on. But other than that, the action's good. Uh, the profiles and stuff they have are really good. Um, but my biggest issue is just durability because I can maybe get one fish per lure just depending on. Now the trench hog is a little bit different and the reason why I say that is because the trench hog is actually a little bit longer. So if I put it like a, on like a three or four aught hook, um, then I can kind of start taking plastic away as I go and it'll be kind of, I'll end up shortening the whole thing, but at least I can use it. But the biggest thing is just the long appendages here can get thrown off pretty easily. So there's so many times throughout the summer that I would throw like a crack and crawl on a Texas rig and a fish would just barely come up and shake its head and then one of the arms would just pop off of it and I would try to keep using it but if you're like me you kind of I just can't it's hard for me to use a lure when it's missing a one little pincher on it I don't and it's kind of dumb I mean you should be able to still catch them on it but to me I, the, the visual effects of it is everything to me okay so now I'm going to give you a little a reason why I'm bringing the trench hog up so one thing I am doing right now, I'm going to talk about the um, 
the the shaky head so this isn't a new technique it's been around for a while i fished it for i don't know i fished it for a long time um i kind of noticed when i was at tournaments that almost everybody that i fish with or that i saw fishing in front of me um because when you're on these smaller lakes i mean you can go like 20 feet and see your one of your competitors that you're fishing up against um, I would notice that when they were sh using shaky heads, they were all throwing trick worms on it. And that's definitely a, an acceptable bait to throw on a shaky head. That's like the, one of the most common things to throw on it. So I was kind of, you know, looking around on the internet. I'm a huge Jacob Wheeler fan. I watch a lot of his stuff. Um, and he was kind of talking about, you know, trying to find stuff that, um, throw stuff that maybe your other competitors aren't throwing. I mean, that's kind of like a general response to most questions when somebody wants to ask about how to get more bites when they're at a pressured lake and that's one thing is just trying to throw things that are kind of unique and he kind of mentioned uh use like shaky heads and stuff and then he said something about the trench hog so i kind of put two and two together and thought well maybe he was talking about throwing the trench hog on a shaky head and i tell you what this had so many bites this summer for me it was unbelievable and i think it's just because of the profile and the fact that it's got those two little tails on the end Whereas the trick worm is nice and slender, has a little bit of, I mean, it has really good action, don't get me wrong, but this thing, I don't know why, but I just had a lot of bites with it. Now, if this thing could hold up to like a, like more than a couple fish per like lure, I would be 100% sold on this stuff because I do love this design. I don't know what it is about it. I just love it. I think it's great. Um, and I don't even think this is one of their popular baits either, but this is one that I absolutely love and I have a whole bunch of these. Um, this one in particular is just green pumpkin, great color. Um, but I would definitely try the trench hog on a shaky head. So now the next question is how do you fish a shaky head? So I may do mine a little bit differently than some people. Um, it's, it's kind of in its name, but it's also a little bit, a little bit different than what it sounds like. So like one thing I would always do is I would throw it out on and then once it got, to, once it hit bottom, once I was on like a semi slack line, I would just kind of shake it a little bit and then I would reel it in just a tiny bit let it sit for a second shake it a little bit reel it in a little bit and I would shake it again and when I fish with other people so here's the other thing too is when I fish with other people and I watch how they I would try to explain to them how I would fish it and I would watch them do it by the time I threw mine out and did the technique that I was using and they were throwing theirs out shaking it reeling it in shaking it reeling it in shaking it reeling it in they would probably have three casts to one to one of mine so i fished it slow and i just seemed to think that i got way more bites it just felt like i got way more bites and bigger bites at that when i did it like that um, just that little subtle shake and then wait shake wait reel it in a little bit move it just a tad bit kind of drag it maybe even and then repeat that same process over and over again um, so if you guys fish it differently, leave it in the comments section below and just kind of let me know how you guys fish it. That'd be kind of an interesting thing to kind of know how you fish it. Also with the um, the football, the swing football head jig, let me know how you guys fish that too. Um, I'm kind of always looking for new ways to fish things and also with the Tokyo rig. Um, just kind of let me know what you guys are thinking or what you guys, or how you guys fish it. I'd be kind of interested to see if it's like, if there's something new that I can kind of pick up on, I think that'd be great. Um, but yeah, that's just how I fish the shaky head. So that's pretty much um, all the stuff I'm going to talk about in this episode. Now, the next episode, I'm going to try to talk. I'm going to try to get a little bit of the hard baits involved, a little bit, maybe some more soft plastics too. I'm going to try to do a few of these, maybe one or two every week, and try to keep everybody updated on some of the stuff that I was using or some of the stuff I'm going to be using this summer. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much going to be it for the episode. Um, subscribe if you're new to the channel, uh, like it if you could, and if you want to, leave me some comments on some of the stuff you want me to try out. Maybe there's some lure that you guys have that you like that you use in your tournaments, or maybe there's something that uh, I didn't hit on or something that maybe you throw on a Tokyo rig that I don't throw on a Tokyo rig because I just primarily use the Z-Man. So anyways, guys, leave your comments below, and I'll try to get back to you when I can, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one.